Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, I'm going to give you some chest training tips, so hopefully on your next chest day, you can light it up like the 4th of July. First, I want to, you know, open this up for just a quick, like, bigger picture overview of a little bit of muscle anatomy and how the pec works and ultimately give you some principles and things to think about so that as you continue you know, to train your chest. And there's really, this goes for any other muscle, how you can essentially make it more effective. So first let's take a look here at, you know, the anatomy of the pec. So the main thing I want to point out here is the origin and the insertion, right? And this goes for any other muscle in your body, but if you can understand, you know, where a muscle originates, which is always going to be closer to the midline of your body and where it inserts, which is always a bone, because, you know, muscles basically create a force and try to achieve bone to bone pull. We can then, you know, you can start to see, you know, how to train properly, right? And properly in terms of building muscle. So, you know, by understanding, you know, origin and insertion, you're going to be able to target train better. So by knowing where it attaches, you know, you're going to be able, it's going to tell you, you know, the direction that it pulls in and in what way the joint moves. And by focusing on this and mimicking the actual action of that particular muscle based on your anatomy, you can effectively target and isolate it, which is also going to give you a better sense of mind muscle connection. And although it's not necessarily that may not be like necessary. And it doesn't always mean that, you know, you're getting any more stimulus than not. It certainly helps to know that you're hitting the muscle that you intend to hit. So, and you know, by under also understanding this, you're going to be able to um, select better exercises. You're going to be able to adjust your technique accordingly to hit the goal that you're trying to do, which in this case for this video is growing muscle. And then also you're going to be able to prevent injuries potentially. And this is just by understanding, you know, how these muscles work, you're going to naturally improve your form over time, which one is going to drive more stimulus because you're utilizing the muscle better, but two, you're not putting the muscle in a compromised position. So it's going to make it a lot easier for you to stay in the gym longer and continue to progress. So if we look at this, we see that the whole point of the pec is to pull our arm across our body, right? Um, you're not focused on anything from the elbow down. It's all shoulder here, right? So, you know, if we're trying to grow our chest, then you just want to think, how do I bring that insertion point in as direct of a line as possible to the target that I'm trying to build, which in this case is the chest. And so if we're going for overall chest, then we probably want to create a direct line. So if I'm pressing here, and I don't know if you can see my arm, but if we're pressing, then maybe we want to flare our elbows out just a little bit to get more of a stretch on the muscle. I know that was the big change for me um, from powerlifting where I would kind of be at a more of a 45 degree angle just because the point was to get the weight from point A to point B. But in terms of building muscle, your goal is you just want to stimulate the muscle. And I think by understanding origin and insertion, you're going to bring the focus inside your body and stop having all your focus externally on like the weight that you're trying to do, because strictly trying to build muscle for a physique sake is a lot different than trying to build for strength sake, right? Because your concern needs to be what is, what is happening inside the muscle? And by understanding that this is going to give you a better idea. So if we're say trying to build the upper chest, then you'll see the lines that I've dr drawn here are going to show, you know, maybe you need to do an incline you know, it's certainly going to bias that muscle. And it's not like it's not going to work the rest of your chest because, you know, your pec ultimately is like all working at all times. But just for the sake of this, if you're trying to hit your lower chest, then you're going to want to decline the angle that your, um, you know, that your arm is and push that way. So just some basic stuff that I think uh, is important to know and will give you a better broad overview of kind of how the pec works, where it attaches, where it's trying to go. And then if you can, you know, basically create a stimulus off of the machines or free weights that you're using that basically forces the muscle to go directly against an external applied force, you're going to stimulate more muscle growth. So let's get into uh, a few of these uh, sets that I have recorded so that I can kind of tell you some cueing and uh, as well as some other things that might help you on your next chest day. So we have a flat chest press here and you'll notice the first thing, watch my head it's come coming forward. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating more of a stretch by bringing my head forward. My head angle is staying the same. 
However, I am trying to basically push my chest out a little bit to give a little bit more of a stretch in that um, lengthened position. And then I am pressing it forward. Now, the cue that I like to use for this, it's um, I got it from Mike Van Wick, where you know it's you're trying to collect the weight, right? You're not just trying to let it down and press it out. You're trying to collect the weight, collect the tension, feel as much as you can. And then once you're at that bottom range, you're going to connect connect back in order to be able to drive it forward. And another tip that I know he said that changed how I train chest is he essentially is trying to almost scoop that weight up. And you'll notice if you sit here and, you know, let's say you kind of bring your arm down like normal versus trying to scoop up, you're going to notice a little bit more activation in your chest. So collect, connect, and scoop. And so you'll notice my hand tension on this exercise. I have zero tension in my hands connecting collect the weight, connect at the end range, scoop up. And so then what I'm trying to do, I'm also trying to roll my shoulders forward at the end of the range for a peak contraction, just uh, something that'll help certainly. And if you start implementing this, you'll notice the amount of weight that you do, you'll probably need to go down and wait because of the amount of uh, stretch and stimulus that you're actually putting on the muscle. So that's that. So now chest flies, I know I've done, talked about this one before on a previous uh, upper body training video, but the main thing here is at the top, I'm trying to, I'm almost expanding my chest, like I'm taking a big breath. And then at the end, I'm once again, I'm trying to bring my shoulder blades back around as if I'm, I want my shoulders to hug my chest. So then the other thing that I like to do is I have zero tension in my hands and I am just touching my fingertips together as more so as a proxy so I can tell how close I am to failure. So here you'll notice I stopped touching and that was a uh, RIR three set. And that was uh, the previous one. That was an RIR three set. So I was slowly working up my intensity over time. So now we have a roller chest fly. I got this from uh, Joe Bennett, a hypertrophy coach. So he basically sits on a roller. It basically allows more uh, scapular movement on the backside, which could lead mean more of a stretch for you. I personally, I love the pec deck. That's just how I like to do it. I do enjoy these from time to time, but for the sake of this video, use a roller if you're kind of having a hard time getting as much of a range of motion on the backside. Same principles here. You're almost trying to wrap your shoulders around your chest, expand your chest at, at the peak contraction point. And then there shouldn't be a whole hell of a lot of tension in your hands here either. So we're going. And then at the end of each, I almost try to touch the bottom of my hands together. So yeah, those are my uh, cues that I often use. So with that being said, if you guys need uh, what, like these types of videos, and if you you know want me to do any more on any other particular exercises, you can just leave it in the comment. Always happy to do those. Um, I'm a nerd as well. I like talking about these things. But uh, yeah, anything else, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do the whole thing. Um, contact info in the description. And until next time, peace.